All right, Emily, we are live. Awesome. This is great, Eric. I'm excited to be here. No, I'm excited to have you on. Um, for all of those watching, and by right. the way, we are live. live. Oh, you have to turn awesome. mute your video. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, for all of those watching, Emily actually was on the GovCon Giants podcast. She's episode number 34. Uh, if you have not yet watched her interview, with me, we discuss her time at the Navy, Office of Small Business Programs, and we'll go over that for the first couple of minutes while people uh, join us. But for now, I'd like to welcome Emily Harmon, and she's going to talk about all the new things that she's learned and experienced since leaving the government. I have a right? special uh, place in my heart for all you entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, uh, love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So uh, before we get started, as always, uh, like I like to tell people out here, if you're new to the channel, if you're new to the community, uh, use this time to introduce yourself. Let people know the industry you're in. Let people know the city that you're operating from. Again, with COVID, we have not had a chance to have live meetings, live conferences. And so I always want to encourage folks out there to tell us what city you're in and also what industry, because there are going to be people watching this who may be able to work with you, help you network with you, connect together. We as small business owners need to work together, not against one another. Right. So we're, we're not big enough to fight and to compete. Uh, I, I mean, we should be again, working together. So for me, all of the folks out here listening, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, let us know what industry you're in and also what city you're from. So, Emily, with that said, how are you today? I'm doing great, Eric. Yeah? Here, I'm, I'm in Stanton, Virginia, in the Shenandoah Valley. All right, Stanton, Virginia, and I'm in Palm Beach, Florida. Mm, it's probably a little nicer there, but today's a pretty day here. I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, the weather's been good up there in your areas lately, so mm -hmm. not too bad. Well, we have, we have some people out here from Hawaii that my man Charles, he's from Hawaii. So he's, I think he always takes the cake on uh, exotic locations. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, he, like every, he wins every contest, but we already talk about locations and things like that. So, you know, he always, he takes the cake on that. But um, so today uh, there's some different topics that you'd like to discuss. And if you want to uh, go over some of the ideas, we're going to kind of just to kind of plant the seed, set the stage, uh, this is going to be a little bit different than traditional government contracting 101, 102. Uh, Emily uh, is going to talk about mindset and some things that she's learned since leaving their position at the Navy. And also she's a podcast out. She's cooperated on some book deals and she's now part of a group. What is the name of it? Positive. Oh, it's positive intelligence. Positive that, um, intelligence coaching program that I'm in. So I wanted okay. to talk about that too. Yeah, I just wanted to share about like what's happened since I retired and and what I've learned um, that some of you may already know, but um, and what I'm trying to do about it in terms of um, I see a lot of people talking about like how to win government contracts, and that's what I used to talk about a lot when I was working in the uh, Navy office of small business programs. All the things that small businesses need to do. And it's really important. Those are all things that you need to do. But then when I started my own company, I started noticing some of the mindset things that can really hold an entrepreneur back. And the best leaders are self-aware. And I've spent the past almost two years, I retired in May of 2019, um, becoming a lot more self-aware and understanding myself. And, um, you know, we're always growing, we're always expanding, we're always evolving into a new version of ourselves. Right. And I've, I was looking forward to sharing some of what I've learned with you and your audience. Oh, that's great. That's great. No, well, and, and like I said earlier, before we started recording this episode today was that, um, you know, I used to, well, I don't say used to, in the past, I've made content related to fear, uh, motivation, goal setting, uh, as well. And so it's been a few years since we've made any of that type of content. So I'm actually excited myself to see what I learned from this episode. So again, I, I see there's about 30 people online. I only see one or two people who's telling me what they do. I see medical supplies, uh, Nigel Murphy. Let me greet the people real quick, Emily, before we yeah, jump on. Yeah, yeah. Let me just yeah. talk to everyone. Can you see your chat on your side? 
I got I I actually closed my screen. I'm gonna open it up again. Open it up and see um, the chat. Just on, mute uh, it. Yeah. All right, let's see who we have in here today. We already know Hawaii's here. I'm actually Nelly now. Joshua. Let's see. Maria Martinez. Baby Goat. All right. Stephanie's here. Jesse Forte's here. Leland's on board. Who else? Tracy Bird, Victoria Singleton, Marisha, Pierce. All right. A lot of people. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's getting there. It's getting there. Joshua. It's getting there. Roy yeah, Landers, Roy. welcome. Eric Canales, welcome. All right. Quest Power, Orlando. All right. I see you. I know you have a good podcast, um, uh, Eric. So this is great. All these listeners and um, you put out oh, a lot yeah. of great content. Now we have, we get a lot of support. I mean, we, we, you know, we, we get a lot of support and that's, you know, I, again, I, I, um, you know, the biggest thing for me, what I found is being consistent. Right. And um, you know, you know, what your podcast, it's really being consistent and always trying to deliver value. And, and that's one of the things that I found for me that works incredibly well in building my brand was putting out consistent, high quality content videos. Uh, you know, even look for, for about two years, I was constantly upgrading my equipment, cameras, light, sound, mics, I mean, everything. And my, my video producer would scream not literally, but you know, all caps and typing. Yeah. This sounds awful. It sounds like you're in a woods, like you're in a jungle. And he always beat me up. So I, um, I just kept working on improving constantly. Um, my, you know, everything that I was doing, my offerings, and and so, and again, also, you know, bringing on great people, right? Connecting with great folks out there who have experience. Uh, by the way, as all of our conversations, it's not a one-way conversation. This isn't a presentation, um, treat it like an event where we're sitting down and pretend like we're in a circle and we're all talking to each other. And I want you to be able to talk to me and talk to Emily and ask questions as well. So I definitely want this to be interactive. I don't want to, uh, you to see us like we're sitting on stage and you're just the audience listening and you can't participate. Uh, I'm going to have Brian, Brian Amster, can you do me a favor? I want you to take the microphone and you're going to go around in the room and you're going to give the microphone to people so that they can can speak when it's their turn to speak. But I do not want this to be like we're on a conference and everybody's sitting in the audience and you're just watching us and there's no dialogue and there's no conversation. I what agree. I find I don't know everything. Yeah, no, absolutely not. And and what I see, found Emily is that sometimes the the best answers come from questions from the audience that again we didn't think of people want to know or hear about or learn. Yeah. Um so again, please if you have any questions for Emily, it is so rare, right? First of all, Emily, can you tell us first of all, what is SES? Oh, senior executive. It's okay. like the equivalent to admiral rank uh, or general rank if you're looking at the army. Or and what does that mean? What does that mean when you're part of SES? You're part of a small group of people that serve between the political appointees and the general service employees. Um, this is the leadership of the um, organization where you work. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, is there thousands of people in SES? Are there hundreds of people in SES? Uh, I'd say probably hundreds in the Navy. Okay. No, I think it was maybe, if I, I could be wrong, but the Navy and the Marine Corps, I think it was around 300. Okay. 300. Not a lot. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so you were part of SES. Are you still part of SES? Well, I'm retired. Okay. All right. So I'm retired senior executive. <laughs> all right. So she's retired SES. Um, and then you rose to the ranks of the office, of small business programs director. Right. And that was a senior executive job. So, yeah. So I started out as a uh, supply corps officer in the Navy and um, after I graduated from the Naval Academy and I did seven years on active duty and then I did 13 years in the reserves. So I got out after 20 because I was a single parent. It was just really hard to be doing two jobs and um, being a single parent and a lot of the parenting responsibilities fell on me. Um, so I decided I needed to uh, not be a reservist anymore. So I retired. But so I did 38 years total when you add up my military and my civilian time. 
So wow. and, and, she's and the, the bomb. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> right you see that's why i want you reading the, the what people write in there so you can see it for yourself yeah. i don't it wouldn't be the same if it came from me you got to read that <laughs> and write it, what he wrote uh, that's what i did but then you know i was able to retire at age 56 that was my minimum retirement age and that was in may of 2019 and that's what i decided to do so no, and 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 the reason why i'm setting the stage is is because for the um 30 plus people that are on as of now um you know, one of the things, if, you, if you've listened to our previous masterminds with Judy and some other folks out there, uh, everyone here has not had an opportunity to speak to someone at that level within government. Um, and so now we have someone here who comes on and can share their experiences and can share uh, their, from their perspective, right, at the top rankings, what they saw and the things that some of us might have went through. So again, the whole point I'm making is ask your questions. So yeah, all right. question. Yep. Ask your questions. That's that's kind of the point that we're making. But Emily, um, you know, we're probably 10 minutes in at this point. So I'm okay with just jumping in to, to the okay. conversation. Just kind of jump in. So I just wanted to share a little bit about like why I retired and 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 what I'm doing now and what I've learned. So I retired because. I realized life is short. I was 56 and I was having a hard time walking actually when I was working in my last job because my hip hurt really badly. And I wasn't taking care of my health because I was traveling all the time to places like Hawaii. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but I was sitting a lot and I was traveling too much. And I do remember one of my last trips was to Hawaii for an event and I just had a hard time walking and I needed to have time to better take care of myself. And I wanted to spend more time with my parents um, who had run a small business my whole life and had finally retired and they had never really had that much time to spend with me. So I wanted time to spend with them. My kids were out of the house and I was able to retire. So within, and I had plans, I started the podcast and I wanted to be a coach, but I didn't know in like what area or anything. And then within three weeks after I retired, my kid's dad was diagnosed with cancer and stage four kidney cancer, but the tumors were pretty bad. In fact, one was in his neck and it was in his C5 vertebrae. His whole C5 vertebrae was a tumor. They had to go in and do two surgeries to take it out. And he ended up being paralyzed in both arms within five weeks after I retired. So one of the reasons I retired too is because I was so tired of I put everything first before me, you know, my kids, my job, everything. I, I'm a, I've since found out and I kind of already knew and I'm a people pleaser and mm -hmm. hyperachiever. So I was just putting everything before me and it's like, well, wait a second, who am I? What do I want to do? So I finally came up for a breath and that's when I decided I, I'm, I'm ready to retire and, and slow down and do things a little differently. Um, and then he got sick and uh, that the whole first year of my retirement was spent helping take care of him. Well, the first five months because he passed away in five months mm -hmm. and um, but getting, I was the executor of the state, getting all that straight and dealing actually with a lot of emotions I had not dealt with when we divorced in 2002. And mm -hmm. I remember inter interviewing one of my podcast guests who said, when you don't deal with your feelings, you shove them down to the basement they lift weights. And even though he had been verbally abusive to me and the kids and, you know, wasn't the best dad, you know, I still loved him. Right. And I spent those five months helping take care of him. And he was really nice that whole time we had some good closure. But one of the things I decided I wanted to do is learn more about myself and to feel more because I had, I had, stayed busy and avoided a lot of my feelings. Mm. And so, you know, for anyone who's listening that thinks, well, you know, when uh, that that's divorced and maybe um, doesn't think they'd feel the same way when their other, their former spouse passes away, I, I beg to differ because it's amazing what, what comes up. So if you have feelings, if you have past trauma, I think it's really important to deal with it. And I actually, have learned since that a lot of that can manifest in your body too. 
And so maybe that's partly why my hip was hurting. I mean, I don't know, but I finally was able to put my health first and, and take care of some of that. And then I, I've invested in a, quite a few coaching programs where I've been learning about myself. And as I've developed my own coaching business, I've seen what it's like to be an entrepreneur because I, you know, worked for the government my whole life. I'd never been on that side of the house. So I was there telling you guys, you got to find your, you know, know who you're marketing to, right? Uh -huh. um, all the advice I was giving you all, now I'm taking it. And then all I right. also noticed how like your, your mindset, fear, your limiting beliefs, all those things are things that can really hold you back as an entrepreneur. I'm sure you've now, run into that. Oh yeah. Now it's now I like what you just said. Okay. So before you were telling us all these things, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. Now, <laughs> um, how do you how do you reflecting back on that time? How do you feel now about the advice that you gave then? I think it was good advice. I mean, you do have to know your customer, and you do have to. Right. I mean, some people say niche, some people say niche, but you do have to niche down. So many. So some of it, a lot of it, was true. But I guess what I'm saying is maybe it's a little harder to implement than you think because. It's like, well, my product is really good. I could, anybody could benefit sure. from it. I serve everybody. Everybody right. in the government needs my product, right. Right? right? But it's like the government, like you had Judy on your on your podcast, right? Mm -hmm. The government is not just an. It's an entity. right. It's not an entity. It's entity. People. It's people. It's a whole bunch of people. Organizations that you're right. selling to, and it's right. Like, you're not selling to Martians or aliens. You're selling to people. Right. Yeah. It's like me saying, "I want to sell my product to the world." Well, who's right. the world? Who's the world? It's people. Right. It's made up of people. <laughs> the right. world needs my product or my coaching, or whatever. But yeah. it's people, and then you have to niche down, niche down, right? Like, well, okay, but does naval aviation use it, or would it be best to start with the army? You've got to kind of start small and then talk to that individual customer, right? Which is the same things I need to do with, with my coaching. And so, yeah. I like that. Now, um, I would love to hear how the things that you've learned today, the emotional intelligence stuff could help someone like us, ourselves, small businesses, talking to that federal person. Well, it, I mean, as we go along, it doesn't have to be at this moment, but you know, right. as we go along, as we it go can through help it. that, it can also help as you lead the company. So one thing I wanted to point ah. out is that I think it's important to have a board of the a board of directors. I've interviewed a woman named Angie Schwartz on my podcast, and she talks about that. Like have your own personal board of directors, people who believe in what you're trying to accomplish. Mm. Um, like for example, not to be mean, but my mom's not on my personal board of directors because she's like, why are you working so hard? You should just come over and do pottery with me and, and do all this other stuff. So I can't have her on my personal board of right. directors. I mean, right. she wants me to succeed, but she also is like, you're retired. What are you doing? Right. right. What are you doing? Not somebody right. that is going to like push you. Right. And when, okay. you say, okay. and when you say, oh, I don't know if I could keep going, they don't say, well, yeah, you could just stop. You don't want that. Right. 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 I, no, I get you. Right. They're like, oh, just quit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why, yeah. Why do you keep going? And because I really want to, I'm just, you know, so sure. having your own personal board of directors is important. Knowing yourself is important. Knowing your why, knowing why you're even in government contracting, because it really is hard. And so sometimes people might get into government contracting because they can get rich quick or something like that. And right. uh, if that's what you're thinking, um, it's going to be very hard to lead your company in the long haul. Mm -hmm. Knowing yourself so that you know when it's best for you to step aside as CEO and have somebody else take over or when you, where your weaknesses are so that you hire the right people, you bring the right people on the bus, not just your buddies, right? Those are all, so knowing yourself and knowing your strengths and weaknesses and knowing what your mind is telling you and being aware of whether or not you're listening to your mind is all really important stuff. Okay. So I wanted to give you, what did we say? We're, oh, uh, people are connecting. So I wanted to no. give you- a no, listen, If you want to read through the comments and see if there's any questions. Yeah. So, Looking at look, that's why I like live sessions because I like to read through and see what people are talking about. Um, Chris says, I love your analogy about the basement, lifting weights. It's great. Mm. Um, Maria <laughs> gave you a little emoji. As Tracy says, Tracy strong says, woman. Oh, well, yeah, I try. I, try. Um, I dealt with a lot of feelings. You know, you can be strong and you can be like, I stayed so busy that I didn't deal with my feelings. That was my way of 
not dealing with them. I shoved them to the basement. So, um, and we were talking offline about that, how, uh, how these things carry over into your business. Yes, they can, because you don't realize that you're stressed out about something maybe, or, you know, you react a certain way at somebody. Um, so let me just share a little bit about this positive intelligence. Okay. Um, book that I've read and coaching program I've been in, and now I'm leading a group coaching program around this topic. Okay. So I don't know if you type in or a website or not, or if I just say it, but if you go to positiveintelligence.com, you can take an assessment and mm -hmm. this assessment will tell you what your top 10 saboteurs are. And everybody has um, judge. We all judge people. We judge ourselves, we judge other people, and we judge circumstances. And But then we have these other saboteurs, and some are stronger than others. My top saboteurs, if you go and take this assessment on positiveintelligence.com, scroll down to the middle, and there's an orange section, and it'll say saboteur assessment. Mine are hyperachiever, um, people pleaser, and restless. And you can learn a lot more about it by reading the book or participating in the coaching program about how they lie to you and how they hold you back. Like my hyperachiever says, Emily, you have to push harder, push, push, push. You've got to keep pushing when really there might be a better way to do it. If we're always pushing, are we really seeing the other way to do it? We're just acting on our limiting beliefs, maybe not pulling in our um, board of directors says, yeah, there you go. That's a sample chart stickler, you know, so when you, you could have your whole team and, and Shirzad, uh, Charmaine, who wrote this book, um, talks about this. He coaches teams. Like you can, if it's not a bad thing to know what somebody else's, um, um, saboteur is because then you can help them catch it and the lies that it's telling you, um, the, the, so do you really have to work, 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 push, push, push? Another book I read is, um, it's called You Squared Okay. by Price Pritchett. And he talks in here about watching a fly. The fly is trying harder and harder to fly through the window. You know, you've all seen that. Flies pushing, pushing, right. pushing, try harder and harder, harder to fly through the window. When really a few flaps of the wing down, the door's open. So what are some things that you're not seeing when you run your company mm. that maybe your hyper achiever or your victim or whatever is telling you about the people that you're dealing with, the circumstances that you're dealing with and about yourself. And, you know, it could be something that impacts you when you're dealing with a government customer. Um, that you haven't really, if, if you better understand yourself, you say, oh, that's my, that's my restless, um, you know, saboteur telling me that um, I should stop on this company, this customer, and they're no good. I'm not going to be able to get any business with them. I'll move to another one. And I just keep moving all around. Uh, you know, I was going to ask you to give me a, a practical example of that. Yeah, there's a practical example. Or another one is, you know, when I ran the Office of Small Business Programs, I'm a hyperachiever, pleaser, and restless, right? As somebody who's restless is always like, they get bored easily. And it's like, well, let's move to this project and do that project and do this project and do this coaching program and do this and this and this. And then you've got like 10 things going on and you can only focus on them 10% of your, each of them 10% of your time and you don't actually finish something. So your mm. restless saboteur is telling you, you, you got to move on. You're, you know, you, that, you, that government customer is not really going to pay much attention to you. Move on to another one when really maybe you needed to be a little bit more persistent. So let me ask you a question because I'm listening to you and um, what I'm hearing and what I've heard from other people is for example, they have to get four certifications. They got to get women on hub zone, eight a, you know, they got to get all these certifications. And, and I, I always say, well, you know, i make one certification work, right? It's like, no, I, I can't start until I have all the certifications. Is that, is that a good example? That's maybe another good example. And I just was on clubhouse the other day and this 
a woman was saying how she has her 8A certification and she doesn't know what to do with it. She doesn't have any government contracts. I'm like, why do you even have your 8A certification? That's the other thing I experienced when, as an entrepreneur, it's like, let me go get training from this coach. And women do this more often than men. They feel like okay. they need just one more class, one more training, right. um, you know, things like that to be good enough. And it's like, there's all these shiny objects. And if you get distracted by all these different shiny objects or, or certifications or whatever, then you're losing sight of your real goal. So how do we fight that? How do we control that? Okay. So one of the things that you learn in the, in this, in this book. Hold on, wait, wait, Emily, wait, before we go on, someone says, no wonder I'm not advancing. I'm like the bunny hopping everywhere. I don't accomplish anything. Sabotage. And I see that so often, you know, even people that come on and you said there's a, even though you said there's a lot of government contracting people teaching that people will come on and, and, and I've mentioned this in my videos, they're watching 10% of the video or 20, only 20%. And then they hop to the next thing. And then they hop and they watch 20% of this. They never grasp the full extent of what we were trying to, to share or teach or learn. And they just hop over to the next thing. Right. And, and then they complain that, that they're not having success or that they're not accomplishing anything. But even people who pay to take my trainings don't watch all the lessons. Oh, no kidding. You don't know how many trainings I've invested <laughs> in. I haven't watched all the lessons. And right. so, you know what? I do better when there's like, um, I have to meet with the coach because I'm a pleaser. And I'm not going to let you down, Eric. Right. You're asking me if I finish your lessons. Right. I'm, going tell you, I'm going to do them. So right. knowing that's why it's so important to know yourself um, and know what your tendencies are. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's so important to know that. Um, By so, the way, real quick, before we start, um, there's 44 people on now. Make sure if you like what you hear, give us a thumbs up. That helps us in the social media world, push the content out. So more folks can hear who were not able to make it to the live session it will push it out to folks who need to hear these particular questions uh, and answers. So go ahead. I just want to put that out there. Give us a thumbs up if you like the content. Yeah, what Shrizad Coach is about or in, in this book, and then it's not enough to read the book. I'm just going to tell you, you've got to practice it every day. And he has an app um, that you can use to practice it on um, if you join a coaching program. But there's, so he says that there's three core um muscles uh, that constitute your mental fitness. One of them is your saboteur interceptor muscle. So basically it's like you're, you pretty much have a neuro pathway in your brain that goes right to, uh, if you're a stickler, if you're a controller, if you're a people pleaser, those are your natural tendencies. You just go there. That's the way it's done. I'm a hyperachiever. You know, you just say that, well, I can't change, but you can because your sage is the one in you that handles the challenges with a clear and a calm mind. And if we can learn to use our sage more um, in positive emotions, then we are better able to silence that make those saboteurs a little smaller. And their sage has five primary powers em empathize explore, innovate, navigate, and activate. And you need to practice the, the, these mental fitness exercises that he has to help you access your sage more and not just be hijacked by the saboteur. Um, and so he helps with the self-command muscle. And I can give you an example of one of the exercises he does if you want, but you can also take an assessment on his website and you can figure out, you can learn your PQ score. So if you go to that website, positiveintelligence.com and right. go to the top menu, you'll see a little um, a, a menu that says PQ score. And that is, will tell you the percentage of the time, right? You find your PQ score in two minutes. It'll tell you the percentage of the time that you uses your, use your sages to combat your saboteur. I went through a seven week program with him um, where we practice uh, using our stages more and he has an app and you can track it, but it's, it's like developing, if you would not go to the gym, Eric, you're a strong guy, you right. wouldn't go to the gym one hour and say, 
dang it, my muscles didn't get bigger. <laughs> no, nah, that's really silly. So you can't do that with your mental fitness either. It takes practice. Mm, gotcha. okay. I like it. Okay. So, you know, take, figure out what your saboteurs are and then learn about how to boost your PQ score. You're definitely welcome to read the book, Positive Intelligence. But, you know, if you're a controller and just imagine how that makes your employees feel. If you're like, well, I've got to control that. I've got to control this. I've got to control that. And then what are your employees thinking? And what if you're one employee that you're really being controlling over is a pleaser? Mm. Right? Just imagine all those saboteurs just going around the rooms in your office, you know, hijacking all these different situations when really if everyone was able to be more empathetic, use their sage, respond from a place of calm, how much more productive we could be during the day. Now, you said earlier that you had um, 10 categories that you fell under. Uh, well, he, he gives you the 10 scores. Everyone has a judge. Everyone judges okay. circumstances people are. Okay. Paying. So it's just whether you're high or low in certain areas. Yeah. Like my, my top three. I mean, I victim is like zero um, <laughs> for some reason, but um, like for my daughter, hyperachiever was like zero. I'm like that explains a lot. I'm just kidding. But I mean, so it's interesting, you know, have your kids take it. This, these exercises that you learn can even be used with kids to, um, you know, to deal with some of the stress that they have in their lives. I mean, you know, what's going on in the world with respect to our uh, mental fitness, our mental health. And a lot of it is this, mo the, these voices in our mind, and that's the victim, that's the saboteur, that's the controller, you know, these saboteurs that are telling us lies like Emily if you would just push harder keep pushing harder you can get more done and I could see my saboteur attacking me when I retired right because I'm like yes I'm retired I have more time to exercise and do all this stuff but um, my calendar was uh, more full than ever <laughs> I was giving myself more work you know right. Right. thinking that if I just kept pushing harder and harder and harder my you know things would but when I learned to slow down and I'm, it's a, I'm a work in process, but progress, when I learn to slow down, when I learn to listen to my intuition and when I was working for the Navy, I think a lot of times I was just too busy to even notice my intuition or listen to my intuition, right? When you slow down, listen to your intuition, don't push as much. It's amazing that you can get just as much or more done. Right, 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 right. Right. No, that's, um, I've seen that with certain people that only work um, six days a week or some people that work only four days a week, but in the four days a week, they're more productive than someone who works, you know, full four, five days a week. Um, and so I've seen that I've never been able to figure it out, but, but, but I do know for me uh, personally, um, you know, my, my most productive times, like I found works for me and some people know this is that like I take naps in the daytime. Mm -hmm. So like I, I, I have uh, mastered the art of like napping. <laughs> so I can work. And then like, if I'm tired at noon or 1 PM, I'll just lay down and take a nap in the middle of the day. That's good. I mean, that's like, I don't know what your hyperachiever would say about that, but your hyperachiever saboteur, if you have one, but my hyperachiever saboteur is that you don't have time to do that. That's crazy. When right. really it helps you out. So Maria posted, yeah, the book with only 20% of teams and individuals, why only 20% of teams and individuals achieve their true potential. So imagine if you went through this group, went through this coaching program with people or even read the book and did it on your own with people in on your leadership team, um, just, you know, and use it not as a way to say, you know, it's just use it as a way to help yourself. I mean, I have learned so much more about myself, not just in this program, but in other awareness um, coaching programs that I've been in. I just used, the only thing I knew when I was in the Navy is that I'm an ISTJ, you know, that's my Myers-Briggs, but there's so many more ways to learn more about yourself that will help you be a more effective leader. And definitely this is one. Now, let me ask you, um, you said that you've learned a lot about yourself in the last two years of starting a small business. Um, you, you touched on briefly the board of directors. How does someone find a board of directors? What should you look for in a board of directors? 
right? So can you can you elaborate some on that, and then we'll yeah. move on to the. Yeah, and I talked about that too in um, a couple of my, one of my podcast episodes with a woman named Angie Schwartz, and you can uh, find that episode on my website, but we were just talking about like, you know, depending on what are the areas in your life that you're, that you're working on, especially for running your business, you might want somebody on the board that um, compliments on your personal board of directors that compliments you in certain areas, like somebody that can hold you accountable for exercising. And I'm talking about it's your personal board of directors as a leader of a company or as an employee of a, of a company. You know, I never got a coach until I was a senior executive and the Navy gave me a coach and we had mentors, but I don't think it's the same. And I think when you have somebody that is, um, that you can talk to, that is interested in your welfare, interested in your higher good, interested in, um, you know, and things that you can talk to them about, about that are going on at work that you can't really talk to somebody else at work about maybe. But um, just look at the areas in your life where you want to work on, where you're weak. And that's, those are good places to start for finding somebody to be on your board of directors. You know, it could be some, it could be just an accountability partner for physical fitness or things like that, because, you know, I, I saw my husband, my former husband pass away. He did not say that he wished he had worked more. Um, so we, somebody that can kind of keep you focused on the big picture too. Mm. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, no, I, and I, and they always say that is that that's the last thing that anyone ever wishes that they had worked another day, another hour. Um, by the way, you didn't give us the website name. Maria just put it in there. Uh, what's your website that you want us to go to to watch that podcast? Emilyharmon.com. Okay. The podcast. <laughs> there you go. He's all over it. You see? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you can just search on uh, Angie Schwartz um, and it'll come up. If you, if you need to know it, just uh, message me too. I don't remember the episode number. Um, someone mentioned in here, let me go to the questions. Personal development is human capital. I like that too. It's so necessary. Yeah, because you know how many people leave the company because they're not happy and you've invested all this training in them and everything. Um, you know, and you can go on Shirzad's website and take a look at all the companies that uh, are using this training. And there's probably other things out there too, but I'm just saying, you know, leaders who are self-aware, um, I think are better leaders, understand their strengths and weaknesses and, um, you know, work to work with people that can complement them, that can help them. You know, I've got coaches, even coaches need coaches because they can see your blind spots. Right, right. right. Yeah. No, I, I mean, again, I've invested a lot of programs. Anytime that I've ever wanted to do something new um i've invested in a training for to learn that and so um when i want to start the podcast and then we discussed this in our last show right uh i think you took pat flynn's course yeah podcast. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah you see and we took john lee dumas's course did you finish uh, all the uh modules well i sent maria through it so you gotta beat maria up <laughs> john lee dumas's um newest book oh yeah yeah he, he um I was watching this thing on, um, there's this guy named Pedro that says he's the king of challenges and he's talking okay. about leading challenges and stuff. And John Lee, Lee Dumas was live with him a lot, um, beefing up Pedro, but also they, um, you know, shared their, his book. So I just okay. got it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I put Maria through it cause I, I could not look, I was just, I, I was overwhelmed with learning how to do YouTube well. So just me learning YouTube was, was enough. Right. And I invested a lot in learning YouTube with different programs. So I have books on YouTube, but I, I, I took courses on how to do YouTube. And then I sent Maria through the podcast one. I just didn't think I could take on two things at once. Well, that's important. And there's so much to learn. I mean, I, one of the things that I've learned about is like, okay, I, I'm the only employee for my company, but I just invested in a VA. At what point do you invest in a VA? And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I can't afford to invest in a VA, but if I don't invest in a VA, then I'm spending all my time doing this admin stuff. So you just got to, 
have faith. And if you have a strong enough desire for what you want to accomplish um, and, and your dreams and goals in life, you have to have faith that things will work out, even if you don't always know how. You know, that's a lot of people do are in that situation. They're solopreneurs. And we've had people c- come on and say to me, how do we go from like, how do we make that first hire? Right. And part of my challenge is, Eric, you tell me all these activities that I must do, but I don't have simply don't have the time to do all of them. Right. And and that's where they need a VA or an assistant or a temp person to help support them. Um, yeah. Just a couple of weeks ago, I invested in a VA five hours a week, right? He got so much done in that five hours. I'm like, I'm doubling it. I don't care (laughs) because I can now focus on some other things where I need to focus. Right. He was doing things that it probably took him, um, you know, so much less time than it would have taken me. Right. Because that's his area of expertise. Right, 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 right. VA does stand for virtual. Yeah. VA does stand for virtual assistant. Yes, that's correct. Right. Yes. Yeah. So that's something to, to think about when you're starting your company is, um, have you read the book, um, Think and Grow Rich? Yes, I have. So that's another good book to read because it talks about, um, you know, and, and, and one of the things I help coach people on is creating the life of your dreams. So many times you got to ask, your, listen to your discontent and listen to your like intuition. What do you really love? And so many times I think we settle instead of creating a life that we would really love. Well, I can't have that because this, this, and this. Well, what if you could? What if, what if you could do that? What would that look like? How could you make it happen? How, how could, you? so sometimes we don't step out for our dreams because we don't know every single step that we have to take, but you have to have faith. And that book, Think and Grow Rich, isn't just about making money. It's about you know, let's say that there's a particular house you want, but you just don't know how would you move? How would this happen? How would that happen? But it, it's about visualizing what you really want and going for it. And um, so that's definitely a, a book that I would recommend. I'm in a study group for that. Uh, I love it because it's teaching me so much. Wow. You are an overachiever. <laughs> oh, man. I'm in a study group for that. Yeah. <laughs> Emily, you're like three different programs already that you've mentioned on here. Oh, right now I'm in, I'm in three, three or four coaching programs right now. I love to learn. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I love to that's, learn. That's, that's fascinating. Uh, yeah, I love to learn. And they all help me be a better coach too, because what I like to coach people on, I just um, updated my, my LinkedIn profile, about what I coach people on so people can look there, but it's all these things help me be a better coach. And I love, you know, seeing people you know, live the life that you really want. I think too many of us settle and I agree. Yeah, no, I agree. I I can say for me personally, um, you know, I, I did construction for many, many years. And uh, while I, you know, I got good at it and um, I had many, many years of success. I had a lot of um, problems with, you know, pain and heart pain and suffering from anxiety and uh, being unhappy because of all of the the anger and the, the, the people in the industry, the way that they speak to you, the way that they, you know, the way that they carry themselves, it just wasn't positive for the type of personality that I had. And I always had a goal to help a whole lot of people and be paid to do so. And I, I literally sought that out for probably 15 years um, while I went through the world of real estate and I went through the world of construction. Um, And I can tell you that today I'm a thousand percent happier, right? And where I I was having chest pains every day, trying to manage, you know, project managers, super superintendents, you know, field teams um, for people who could, really could care less, <laughs> you know, and that's the way I felt about it. Right. But then there's other folks that love and thrive in that environment. Right. So, right? so go where you love and thrive. Right. You know, one of the things I have on my website is, and this is really a true story. I, I'm commuting to 
to work on the Metro in uh, Washington, DC. And every you, know, if you guys have ever done it, you'll see, you know what I'm talking about. Everyone's got their headphones in and they're like this. Right. And I caught, and I thought, wow, all these people are miserable. And then I caught my, a vision of myself in the subway door. And I'm like, that's what I look like. Right. And I was just right. like, I'm get, get up, go to the Metro, go to this, go to that. And, and I, and I liked being in small business, but I had been in it for 15 years and right. I, the challenges were still there, but they were a lot of things I'd already done. And it wasn't like, I wasn't waking up like, yes, I get to go to work. I wasn't right. excited. Right. Life is too short to not be excited. Right. So, you know, all the things that I'm doing right now, even though my mom can't understand it, right? But it's not what brings her love, but it's what brings me love. It, right. It's a life that I love and I and I don't dread getting up and I love doing podcast interviews and I right. love coaching people. Right. Uh, just like she loves doing pottery and watercolor. We're at different stages of our life, but life is too short to, to not do what you love. Tell us more about a little bit more about your podcast. You haven't really talked about it. You've talked about different guests, but you haven't talked about your podcast and its purpose. And what do you do on there? So it's called the Onward Podcast, and um, I published the first seven episodes the day after I retired. And it's I interview different people about how they faced adversity and how they move forward. And then what I started to discover is that when people face adversity and how they move forward through it. They also really discover who they are. Who they discover themselves yeah. along. You the way. know what? I agree with you, but that is so hard to to get people to buy into. Emily, you, you listen to some of the episodes. You it, it, you know may, you may not see it right away. Even Shirzad talks about it in this positive intelligence training. Everything that happens to us that we say is bad, that we could come up with what's good about it. And he gives an example. He gives an example right. in the book about this company that he was coaching. They lost their biggest client and they're all like, right. Oh my God, it's bad. We're going to go down. Everything's terrible. What good could come of it? Right. And every, all the managers are like, what do you mean? You're crazy. No good could come of it. But anyway, in the, to make a long story short, the good that could come out of it is that they could be even better. Right. It taught them where they could go and look at where they were not doing well and they could make even a better product and they could in the next two to three years get that customer back maybe and then even increase their sales even more. So it sucks when you're going through it. It sucked when I was going through um, raising my kids and 10 years of my son uh, being addicted to drugs and alcohol. It was really, 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 really hard. But all the things that I went through prepare me for where I am now. And um, my son's doing great. He's studying engineering in college. So um, you, you can kind of look back and see it, but you can't always see it when you're going through it. No, I agree with you. Um, again, and I have so many stories to share, but I will, I'll say something that recently happened to me that's relevant. Uh, a lot of people that are watching this um, uh, are familiar with Mebs. Mebs actually is an intern that came on and he started helping us answer phone calls. And then today he messaged me and he said that there was some um, uh, issues with his family that he may have to step away. And so we discussed it. And, and so this week he's leaving us and he has to go back. He's originally from, from Tanzania um, and he's going back to help with his family's business Thursday. And um, so he told us that he told me that today and uh, he sounded a little bit down. I said, listen, don't worry. I said, I'm, you know, we don't know why this is happening and for what reason, but you can take all the lessons that you've learned, the, the time that you've spent with us, and you may see an opportunity when you get back over to Tanzania that you didn't see before that's right in front of your face, yep. right? Because you've, you've had experiences here, you've had some success here, and you've been studying underneath, uh, you know, GovCon Giants and myself and Maria, for the last six months. So you are going, your eyes are open. You're looking through a different lens now. And it, he had so much vigor by the time we got off the phone call. So That's I, good. as opposed to saying, Oh, it's terrible. You're leaving and you got to go, you know, it's more like, Hey, you know, now you're, you're arriving with a whole new lens that you didn't have before. And the possibility exists. And he said, you know what, you're right. Because uh, on the forecast list for USA ID was his country, Tanzania. And because they're such a, um, they had a, such a strong workforce before uh, when they had, a, you know, when the, when, the, when the economy and everything was good, they can rebuild back that same workforce. So 
I agree with you. And, and I use that. And I, and I try and teach my students that I've shared other examples where uh, I was, I went through a couple of lawsuits in my business uh, that it turned out to be the best thing that happened to me. But I, again, I'm telling you, I, I live it, I've experienced it and I try and share that with people, but it's just, it's still hard. You know, it's still it's, hard when it's you're still hard for them. To, it's not for me. It's hard for them to understand and see that. And yeah. so again, I, I want to, you know, remind people those things. Yeah. So but the, I think it's important to tell your story and for pe- and people come on my podcast, they share their story and it helps other people realize that they're not alone. And, oh, if Eric can do that, or if he can do that, or she can do that, then maybe I could do it. So that's now, why I do the podcast. Brian asked a question. He says, Emily, did you see greatness uh, while she was in a position with the Navy? What was great about them? I, I think he's referring to like small businesses. Oh, did I see great small businesses? What That's was- what I'm saying. Like, it, like for example, uh, when someone came to you, did you know that that company would be successful versus not successful based on questions or comments? Or That's what I'm assuming. I'm just elaborating. Yeah. And I might have shared some of that in this book. Um, can I advertise this book? Become yeah. an expert. <laughs> uh-huh. This is a book that I helped write with some other people. But um, so I shared a lot of tips in there about doing business with the Navy. And in one of my chapters, I list pro tip, all these different tips. And so I highlight some things that companies do well. So the ones that do well, I think, are the ones that have done their homework before they even approach somebody in the government. They've looked, this sounds basic, but they've looked at the website. They've looked at the long, <laughs> I mean, it sounds basic. I know, but I-, I No, heard- I'm, no Emily, I keep tell, tell them because- a lot of times I think we have to remind people of the basics. Um, when I was an athlete and I played football, you have practicing drills, just practicing. You have to practice the basics, right? I don't so, know how many times I heard my executive assistant on the phone, www.navy. Okay, so that's number going. one. Number two, make sure you're really know who it is that you're talking to because sometimes companies will call and they'll give this long explanation to the person that's just responsible for answering the phone and scheduling the meetings and they don't need to know everything. So just be Uh, aware of of how much time you're taking up on, um, you know, and, and do your homework. Those are some things like there was companies that reached out to me and I told them exactly what they needed to do. And then they didn't go do it. And they'd reach out to me again. And I said, well, did you go talk to Navair? No, I haven't done that yet. Well, then you don't need to come see me as the head of small business for the Navy and the Marine Corps. A lot of times people think they have to start at the very top. You really should start at the command that you, you know, where you're seeking to do business, but this guy wouldn't, this guy wouldn't do it. So Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. No, I, in, this chap, in this book, I do cover um, three. I was able to tie my podcast episode about overcome my podcast about overcoming adversity to government contracting. It's mm. one of the chapters in there. The top three takeaways from my guests about facing adversity and moving forward. And I tied it to government contracting. Wow. Wow. Good question, Brian. Good question. Yeah. Thanks, um, thanks for bringing it out. Someone else asked, let me go back to it. They said when you were uh, when you were an SES. Okay, as an SES rep, how did you keep the large OEMs from abusing the smaller contractors and taking the set asides? It was really, it was really tough. I mean, I don't know that they necessarily took the set aside, right. no, they take a set aside. But, you know, they yeah. may not have, you know, they couldn't take a set aside unless they, you know, lied about their status or something. No, no, we're talking but yeah, but that was a quite, you know, know you they, yeah, they go in and they try to get the government to not make it a set aside. That's too right. risky or whatever. So one thing that I think is really good as a, a small business owner is to pay attention to that stuff. And when you see some of that happening, go see the small business professional, because look, there, you know, there's not very many small business professionals compared to contracting officers and compared to the number of contracts that are awarded. So they cannot stay on top of everything. So right. if you see something on a long range forecast that you think should be set aside for small business and it's not, or when you see a large prime, um, you know, taking some actions that you think are restricting competition, I think it's really important to bring that to the attention of the small business director or professional because they may not know that right Um, so and then subcontracting is something to really pay attention to too i know that the navy's um 
uh, I, I can't say everything that they're doing, but I know they're looking into subcontracting. And when I was um, in the um, in my last job, um, I had some people that went to the Naval Postgraduate School, and their paper they just finished it, but their paper is on subcontracting, and they mm. looked and they they're giving some re recommended suggestions for how to improve okay. subcontracting. Because I know okay. sometimes the large primes try to take you know they, they right. say that they'll sub to the U, but then they don't. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. No, no, no. I, yeah, no. And, 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 um, yes, the, the large primes want everything guys. And we know this and, and we're aware of it and the government's aware of it. But like she said, you, 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 you know, when you, when you look at the government or the Navy as a whole, uh, you know, Emily's one person. And so, like she said, she, you know, she may, you know, there, maybe there's other people within her agency that's aware, but that doesn't make her aware. Right. And so, again, there's lots of moving parts, pieces, people, and you can't make assumptions. So if you fail um, to do your job and, and make them aware of it, then you can't blame anyone on the outcomes is the way I see it. Yeah. And it's tough sometimes, I know, because it's like, well, I want to make you aware, but then I don't want anyone to know that I was the one that said anything. So <laughs> right. it's, then it's sometimes, you know, our hands are tied. Um, sometimes we don't have to let it people know who said something, but sometimes you know, depending on the situation, you might need to, and then, you know, our hands are tied or tied. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, sure. No, I agree. I agree. Um, what else do we have on here? What else? I'm just looking through some questions. Um, you guys are all connecting with each other. So that's good. Yeah, too. no. And that's what I want. I want them to connect with each other. Yeah, I like um, that. What about a three billion dollar small business? Don't know, no, no. but that's no. something that you write your congressman about. And you know, I mean, you got to mention ADS. The company's name is ADS. Hmm. Um. So he's that's talking about ADS code, or you know, I don't know. No, it's it, it's um. They they uh, they work with a lot of small companies internally. But that's we're not going to go into that. Just yeah, someone said, have you heard of large primes taking on subs that only have five workers? No, I mean, really, it's the contracting officer to, to take a look at, you know, the subs that the prime is proposing and to make sure that um, they feel like they can deliver on on what they're proposing. So it's really hard to answer questions like that. It depends on the situation. Someone asked Emily, can you bid on contracts in a different agency if you work for the government? I think that you can, what I would recommend, I know people who work for the government and have their own company. So what you need to do is talk to your ethics attorney and make it really clear as to what you're doing. Okay. Okay. All right, let me see. Um, Emily, someone asked about chatting with you via email. Do you have an email that you give out? It's uh, Emily. Why don't you type it in my thing in our chat and I can drop it in there for you. We'll put Emily. Uh, I saw someone ask about speaking with Emily via email. I'm going to drop it in the chat for everyone to have. Yeah, Emily at emilyharmon.com. You can also go to my website, which is, is mostly um, about uh, a movement that I've started, the Onward Movement, which is about creating a life that you love. Um, I haven't updated my website to um, add this book and to show how I help government contractors, but um, I definitely, I do some um, consulting with small businesses. What I really want to consult more on is, is this positive mind, positive intelligence stuff right. and uh, leadership kinds of things. But sure. I do help people with uh, questions about how to do business with the government. And then if I can't answer them, I send them to other people. So. But Emily, before someone comes to you with questions on how to do business with the government, what should they already know? <laughs> you should know about this book. They should do their homework. They should, have, you know, they should you know. Have. Like, I mean, before I come to you, Emily, and say, hey, Emily, uh, where do I get registered from? You don't want those no, kind of people. I don't even know. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't take Okay. Them. Okay. So yeah, let's just, go we, gotta, we have to set some expectations. Yeah, they should okay. go to the PTAC. By the way, I'm representing my VIB network shirt yeah. today, guys. So, I mean, um, there's a lot of people out here that are giving you some of the basic stuff. So what kind of people, what kind of, uh, what kind of questions do you welcome or invite or like at what level do I need to be before I come to you? Um, 
I, I mean, level in terms of revenues or sales, but you know. No, but you know, um, I really, I probably end up referring you to somebody like Eric or other people that are doing the contracting stuff in this book, right. because um, what I, I don't like, I don't do stuff like pull up, um, you know, databases and figure right. out who's doing what and what makes right. you should have and, you know, what's your capability statement like? I mean, right. I don't do a lot of that stuff because that's, I'm creating a life that I love and that's not what I love right, right. now. Right. Right. <laughs> what I love is doing this leadership coaching, um, self-awareness coaching, um, helping people create a life that they love, helping um, business owners figure out how they could work smarter and not harder, not push, you know, helping them learn about their saboteurs. That's what I want to help with. But you know what, if you send me an email and uh, I'm not going to say, you know, get lost, I'll figure out a way to help. <laughs> I do. <laughs> no, no, I, I think that's great. I, I think that's great. Um, some of the other things that you talked about before is, um, in the, in the original email you sent to me, Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about a couple of different things. And one was, uh, you know, people telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to touch on that? It seems like to me, you had some experiences with, with that when you first came out and worked at the business world. Well, just on, you know, on your, uh, what I wrote there is, you know, people that are on your personal board of directors should be people who, you know, are going to tell you the truth, not people pleasers like me. I'm just kidding. But people who are, uh, are able to say, call you out and say, look, that's no, you didn't run that meeting very well, or mm. this, you know, you could have done better in this area in a way, in a good way, a way of helping you. So people that are going to be, tell you the truth, people you can trust, you know, some leaders want people who say yes to everything and, and agree with them on everything. And that's, I, I disagree with that strategy. <laughs> I yeah. want people to tell me, even though it sucks. You know, Emily, I, I don't have no one around me agrees with everything I say. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, you know, especially when you have a uh, people pleasing, you know, inner critic. It's like, oh, you didn't please that person, that person. That I don't person. think I have any people pleasers around me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think uh, so. Yeah. And then, and then the importance of health of self care is something else that I told you about. I think self care in terms of your mental fitness, self care in, in terms of, you know, taking a nap. <laughs> like mm. you said, Eric, right. self-care in terms of um, taking a break when you need it in, in right. terms of knowing that push, push, push isn't going to solve it in terms right. of realizing that, I mean, I know it's a saying and I know it's unfortunate that we just really don't get it until we get it. I didn't really get it. Life is short until I saw, I saw Bruce pass away and, um, and he was, you know, really tough hard worker at nav air he was worked at logistics and um he was 64 when he woke up when he passed away he was 64 when he woke up paralyzed in both arms can you imagine that you can't feed yourself can't scratch a niche can't do anything and how awful that was and um so take care of your health you know i told like i said i couldn't walk when i the day i retired hardly my hip hurt so bad I had to really make that time to take care of myself. I interviewed Kyle Kozad, who's a classmate of mine from the Naval Academy. He was, um, he retired, but he, at the time he was an admiral and he was in charge of Naval education and training. And he slipped and fell in his house and became paralyzed from the waist down. Wow. And he, he, there's articles about him. You could Google him, admiral in a wheelchair. And he's an admiral, right? He's the head of Naval education and training. He went to physical therapy. He did the work that it took. Um, so a lot of times we tend to blow that stuff up, off, right? Right. I went and got my mammogram today. Um, yeah. You don't blow that stuff off. Right, 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 right. So that's self-care. You know, oh, I'm just so important. It's I'm too busy, this and that. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I think we forget about that. Um, you know, we forget about that and we put those things in a back burner. And that's why I was, you know, for, for me, uh, I appreciate you coming on and talking about that because I think, you know, again, I, you know, we, I already have 400 videos on government contracting, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, I, you know, for me, like I said, it's been two years since we talked about 
uh, these, these other topics, these other things that also influence your life and influence your livelihood. I can tell you, um, you know, I had someone that was agreed to come on and be a coach for me that um, her mom became ill and she, and she just you couldn't make the time and, you know, life circumstances happen and, and obviously change of fate. So like you said, um, things happen or happen to us around us uh, with the people that we care about, the people we love. And I think it's important to understand how all of that impacts our decision making and also has a, a, a greater impact on our business as well. And that um, and understanding that your people are going through that too. Um, uh, yeah. Very important. Yeah. And um, so one of the biggest mindset things I had to deal with, um, and some of you may be able to relate to this, especially if you're like, um, did a whole bunch of time in the military. I mean, I worked for the military since I was 18, right? 18 to 56. The military, the Navy decided what my salary was going to be and what mm -hmm. I was worth. So now I'm retired and I'm a coach and I got some money issues because I don't like asking people for money. I don't like selling. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't like putting myself out there. I don't right. like, you know, I just want people to join my coaching program, but I don't, I'm afraid to do the sales stuff that it right. takes. You know, you know I've, I've worked with some coaches on that, on that fear. It's like, what's the fear? You've got to go, you've got to do the things that you're afraid of. You got to pick up the phone and call what's going to happen. What's the worst that can happen. But you know, our mind can tell us all these things that are going to happen. So, you know, I'm guessing that that is um, an issue that possibly some veterans run into or oh, yeah. somebody who's worked for a company for so right. long that they just tell you what you're worth. Yeah. I think a lot of veterans run to that issue. Yeah. Yeah. I have, and I know a lot of people that worked in government, um, they're afraid <laughs> to leave government because they're afraid of what their next steps are going to be. Right. Yeah. And, and then you have to be accountable for yourself and your actions and Everything fall the whole weight of of your your salary, your income, everything falls on your shoulders now. I know. Yeah. I know. But if you're doing what you love, then it and you can make money. I mean, you've got to you can't just say, I love um painting watercolors and you're not gonna be able to sell it or whatever. <laughs> you need to find something that you really love to do that you can that that would serve other people, other people would find helpful, other people would want to work with you. So um, but um, you know, ask anybody who started their own company, right? I'm sure it's worth it. And you've seen this picture too, right? About how you, sometimes when you want to quit. Oh, uh, no, I was going to say that when you talked about the people <laughs> jumping around in different programs and we talk about that, um, you know, digging the holes and they dig a hole to dig one feet deep. And then they go over here and they dig another feet deep and yep. they go over here and dig two feet deep. Quit and if they just way. kept digging, right. If they just kept digging, they hit their diamonds. Um, so I, I know that I, frequently, yes, because, you know, I mean, it, I'm sure everyone runs into that. Like, ah, oh, should I keep going? I mean, I don't have to, I'm retired, but I love what I do. So yeah, I'm going to keep going. No, that's again, if you, if you can, if you wake up every morning excited, I, I don't think there's anything better than that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm so the same way. Look up again, someone asked, but some, but Maria is on top of it. She posted <laughs> Becoming a GovCon expert, uh, how to accelerate your success in government contracting. Right. Um, so. Yeah, that's the book. I wrote three chapters of it. That's all. That that was my contribution. I didn't like edit it and all that. That's a lot. Right. <laughs> no, I know. I, 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 or are you the one that says that I'm going to have that problem editing my next book? <sighs> I heard it's tough. You should talk to uh, Mike Lejeune who wrote this. Yeah. He knows how to do the editing really well and he can give you some templates. I think that okay. would help. Yeah, no, I'm it's, let me tell you, it's, yeah, I know they're, they've written three books. So yeah. Yeah. So he, they he's, got he's got it down pat. He's mm -hmm. got it down pat. What else? What else guys? Listen, I'm, I don't want to hold everyone up. I don't want to hold Emily up. Any other um, questions? I'm, I'm supposed to be in a coaching meeting right now with one of my coaches. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, Emily took the time to come on. I don't see any questions specifically for her. Look, she's on here. She's supposed to be in a meeting. She's, she's still working on, um, someone asked, let's see. Ranger in high school is probably the hardest physical work I've ever had to go through, but Coder is a second. Um, 
Let's see. Berkey, I just want to ask you something. I started my business three months ago. PPE, I can't find customers. Um, Berkey, I can tell you um, if you can't find customers, then there, I mean, everyone is buying PPE all the time, every single day. So I'm not sure where you're looking at, but uh, if you look up, even if you go just to, to the basic SAM website and type in PPE, you see a list of people that are buying PPE every day. So I, I find it hard to believe that you're not finding customers. I think the challenge is, is that you're not finding people to buy it the way that you want to sell it. So the, the people are buying PPE that is readily available, not PPE that's being shipped or transported from someplace else and waiting for it to arrive. So if you've got PPE sitting somewhere in the United States ready to be sold, there are all the states, cities, and even the federal government is buying PPE regularly, consistently. Um, so that would be my recommendation for you on that. Let's see. A lot of good comments here. Finally, you on hold long enough. I was trying to get the picture to order. Okay, they got the book. Okay, good. You good. can't make on the military circumvent your capabilities. Um, hey, Eric, the last video you made with the waves really hit home for me. I appreciate it. Good. I'm happy. Thank you. And, you know, and even that video that I made with the waves, how many people actually stay till the end of the video? Right? <laughs> like, so, so the, Emily, the video is literally like six minutes long, but one of the, at the very end of the wave video, I made a video and I'm standing on these rocks, right. And there's waves bouncing like in the back of me. And mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm there with one of my clients who does, we do government contracting I advise him on the, on the federal marketplace arena, very successful guy, very wealthy. And I asked him, I said, Hey, look, I want to make a video today. I want to talk about, you know, how did you get to this level of success and people are going to see this house and how you live and they're going to want all this stuff. And so he, he gave me some, some tips. And then, so I went over to the ocean because, you know, we're looking at the Atlantic ocean. I went over to the ocean by the rocks and I'm standing there making the video. Well, as I'm making the video, Emily, the waves comes over my head and splashes me. Oh my gosh, I gotta watch it. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. And of course, it's behind me, so I didn't see it happening. Oh my gosh, that's gotta be so funny. Oh You're my like, god, I'm in Florida. I can film by the by the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, in this particular video, I was actually in Dominican Republic, so I was, oh, okay. actually, I was in Dominican Republic, and this was a few years ago. Oh, okay, um, I have to watch it. <laughs> and, and so it was really neat. And then the waves literally come over my head and smash on top of me. And, and, and for those people who didn't see it and, and I'll drop it in chat or Maria, you could drop it in the chat. Um, what it was, was he said that, and this actually ties into a lot of things we're discussing here, Emily, which is um, in the beginning, when you're starting out, you're usually giving your time and your effort to someone else, right? So whether it be like you were the, giving it to the government uh, other people are given to as employees to small businesses. And so in the beginning, when you are uh, investing, right, you're spending your time, your energy, your brain power and everything in that company that you're working yeah. for and supporting them. And so the difference is you have to um, figure out how to take that same talent, that same skill set and energy and apply it to your business for yourself. Right. Yes. And, and so in the beginning, um, you know, sometimes you may have to give away the biggest part of a deal just to make a deal happen, just to get started. And and actually going back to John Lee Dumas, that's what he does. He does a lot of partnering with other people's books and content, right? And they share in on the deals. And so that's what I talked about was, was sometimes to get started in this game, in this business. And I know some people ask questions about being taken advantage of by large companies. But see, for me, Emily, I look at it opposite. So I say, you're not being taken advantage of. That's the cost to learn. Yeah. Right? That's the price you pay to get into this marketplace to, to learn this. If you treat it like it's your MBA, yeah. right? And so that $30,000 that you lost on that particular project or the, or that you, um, that you could have, you, you know, you didn't get the additional monies for the contract. That's your MBA to set you up for learning later on, right? For legacy. And a lot of people don't see it that way. So they get frustrated, they get upset. But um, I had a friend of mine that taught me that a long, long time ago. Again, another successful entrepreneur. He said that did AC and he said, Eric, 
I've got my accounts receivables, right? And so, you know, after 90 days, your accounts receivables, basically, you know, they're garbage. You can't count them on your books. And what he said was, that's my marketing of my business. He said, that's the same thing if I invested in marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he goes, I run, you know, you run a $2 million business. You've got $30,000 in bad debts. Well, that's my marketing expense. Uh, it's just the perspective. It's, it's just a perspective. We all have paradigms and lenses that we look through things. And, you know, when you're thinking something's bad, think about, well, what could, what could be, be about it? Right, right. And, and because sometimes we can't see those things. We can't see our blind spots. That's where that personal board of directors, or if you read that book, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill talks about being in a mastermind, right? Right. So right. Do, who are you surrounding yourself with? that's going to lift you up and help you and make you better. If you're not in a mastermind, if you don't have that board of directors, if you don't have someone you can call when you're like, oh, I don't know how to do this, or you're feeling a little down, someone that's going to help you lift you up and you're not lifting other people up, um, that's something to think about. Because I think, you know, being in a mastermind is really important. No, it's funny. Actually, we um, on my boot camp, and all you boot campers, Mohammed, Brian, um, all the people in the boot camp, did we not just talk about the pillars of success and the people that you need on your team? I'm uh -huh. looking at my notes that happens to be here on my desk from the boot camp, and we talked about a lot of that stuff and the pillars of success, people on your team, and putting together your organizational chart. Even if you don't have the people yet, putting together the boxes for the people that you do need to support whatever it is that you're trying to do. So, yep. Um, where are you going? What's your vision? Right, right. What are you doing? What, notice what you're noticing every day and takes and takes what can I do today with what I have, with what I know, with what I have to move forward. You may not know exactly how you're going to get all those people on your team to fill out that org chart, but you know what you can do today. What steps can you do today? That's what you do. Right. Right. Agreed. Agreed. I agree. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's see. Mohammed says, as an entrepreneur, I find what you guys shared here about mindset extremely valuable especially moving past fear. Brian answered a $20,000 you spent learning how not to get the 8A. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Someone wants to reach out to us. Yeah. I mean, look, if we have, uh, I don't remember the, the text number, but you can always reach us at service at govcongiants.com. I'll drop that in the chat. Also on all of our YouTube videos, there's a number that you can text. We have a, com a line that you can actually send a text to and uh, let me type this in here real quick, Emily. You're doing great things, Eric, with your podcast and everything that you're doing, all your coaching programs. and Yeah, thanks. I mean, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy. And I saw the need 10 years ago when I, I was working with some small businesses getting started. Um, and what we try to do, Emily, is I try to to prepare them so that you don't get those phone calls. And again, you're not in that position anymore, but the next director of the Navy yeah, and their assistants are not receiving those phone calls from people asking about, um, like you said, their website and who are you, my customer and things like that. I try to eliminate all that. So again, um, and it's funny because Judy and I have this conversation. She's more at the higher end. I'm at the, 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 the basic end, the, the beginning stages of what people need so that they can speak intelligently. So they can ask really good questions. So that you can really, by the time they get to you, you can direct them exactly where to go and what to do, but they're not wasting your time. And it's, and it's a very effective call and, and where they're going to get something from it. Because again, and, and, and I know the government has a lot of programs and I, and I, and I promise you, I send them to everything. I send them to PTAC. I send them to SBDC. I send yeah, them I to, but, but you know, those are also people. Yep. Right. With yep. different skill sets. Yes. varying levels of uh, knowledge. Yep. Um, some are better than others. Yep. And, and so, you know, I try to encourage people not to be discouraged when um, that person on the other end doesn't necessarily uh, give you information that helps you or that validates you or that takes you to the next phase because there are other resources that you could turn to. Um, and it's actually funny. My first book that I wrote, The Billion Dollar Playbook, Emily, I actually list 72 different websites that you can use and go to for free or very inexpensive resources. So that's my very first book because so many people say, well, where do I go? Who do I turn to? And so I, I've thought it wasn't enough to just 
keep stating that. I put it in there and I put how to use those resources. So if you're at this step, this stage, these are the resources that you can use that are free. If you're at this stage, these are the resources that you can use that are free. If you're, you know, at this level. That's really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Because I I just, I never saw that anywhere listed. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you know, maybe the Navy gave you four, four, three or four sites. Maybe this other person gave you three or four sites, but not in one place where I could have, okay, here are all of the resources that exist in one book and one location. Yeah. I mean, it's, I can see how it's overwhelming to do business, with all- government, especially when you're, you know, trying to start your company. And if you've never worked in the government, you don't really under, or for Department of Defense, all those acronyms and things like that. I mean, it's, it's really tough. And so, you know, what I wrote in one of the chapters here, comparing it to my hour podcast, three things, you got to know where you are and where you're going. Right. Um, you have to ask for help. Yes. You have to be persistent. And those are the three thing, themes that run through my podcast on, you know, overcoming adversity. And I. And Same I again. That. Can you repeat that again for the people that um, know it? where you are and where you're going. All right. Know where you are and know where you're going. Ask for help. Ask for help. Wait, I think that one deserves two mentions. Ask for help. Yeah. So many of you out there are not asking for help. Okay. And, and number three. Persistent. And what? And be persistent. Be persistent. I like that. Be persistent. You know, um, someone I said, another way to say be persistent. Uh, when I was younger and I just got started my business, someone said to me, Young man, stay interested. Mm-hmm. So that to me is be persistent in a different way. Mm-hmm. Okay. He said, stay interested because like you mentioned, Emily, you gave that person when you were working in the government, you gave them the exact steps to do and they did not do them. Mm-hmm. I've had p on my show that said the same thing. I've had small business liaison officers for large prime contractors say the same thing and people did not follow the instructions. Mm -hmm. And she says, Eric, these were good quality small businesses that I could see us working with, but they didn't even do the basic things that I asked them to do. So what are they going to do when we get them on contract? Not do what, not do. How you do anything is how you do everything. Right. People see that people are paying attention. So in the book, just one example that I use is um, know where you are and know where you're going. What I talk about there is that that means know what where your company is and where are you going? Are you going to be a subcontractor? What group, what organization in the government are you going to do business with? It can't be I'm going to do business with the government, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then and then so what I do to drive my point home is I summarize a couple of podcast episodes. So what I said in that one, I I, um, here's just one of the episodes I said, I said, Claire Brown knew where she was when she was 12 and she's my roommate from the Naval Academy. Okay. Her daughter, Claire Brown knew where she was when she was 12 and broke her neck in a fluke gymnastics accident. She was told she would be paralyzed, never walk. She knew where she, she, she didn't want to be there. So she knew where she was going. She was going to, sorry about that. She was going to get back at it. Now guess where she is. She's, I think that was when she was 12. I think she's about 24. You can watch her probably maybe on TV if they broadcast it. She's a Paralympic cyclist headed to Korea. I mean, to Japan. Wow. So she knew where she was and she she was persistent too, but she knew that she didn't want to end up like that. I mean, and, and maybe, you know, that's not saying that somebody who has an injury, um, you know, Rodney Flowers is another guy I used. I, I don't know why I used some spinal cord injuries, but he's a contracting officer at NavAir. Um, I think it took him like 15 or more years before he could walk after a football accident where he he um, became, a, he was told, you're going to be a quadriplegic for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. He knew he didn't want that. So somebody else who wasn't, didn't know where they were and didn't know where they were going, wasn't really determined, didn't ask for help, wasn't persistent, could probably still be laying in bed. Right. Rodney's contracting officer at NavAir, and that was when he was 15, he hurt his neck. Um, he's a contracting officer at NavAir and he's got his own podcast, um, the Game Changer podcast, Rodney Flowers, and he's walking. Wow, wow, wow. So, 
Yeah. So those points, you know, hopefully help people, you know, I, t- I still tie it back to government contracting, but know where you are, know where you're going, ask for help and be persistent. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. I think that was great. I actually, you know, we've, we've been on for about an hour and a half now. I think that was great. I want to be respectful and courteous for your time. Thank you so much for coming on today, Emily. I yeah. love it. I love it. Um, make sure again, how, how can people reach you? Let's uh, just give them some some last resources where they can reach you at. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay, so LinkedIn. And, okay. And my and my name is spelled H A R M A N, and so connect with me on LinkedIn. And uh, by the way, if you connect with her on LinkedIn, make sure you put in there G C G GovCon Giants. So she knows <laughs> maybe she might not <laughs> make sure you put G C G where you heard Emily at. Okay, so GovCon Giants, and for all of you that are watching this on replay, right? three months from now, six months from now, eight months from now, you know, make sure you put that on there. That you I'm still getting all these LinkedIn requests. Three, yeah, six, you're still, right, right, exactly. <laughs> 2022, right? 2025. You, I want you to get LinkedIn requests. It says GovCon Giant GCG. So um, share that. What else? Where else can we reach you? Um, just my website is emilyharmon.com and there's okay. a way to schedule a meeting with me if you're interested. And uh, um, those are the two best ways I'd say. And right now, and right now you're interested in, 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 in meeting with people discussing, uh, positive intelligence. Well, yeah, I mean, you can look at my LinkedIn, um, site where I did list, you know, the, the people that I like to work with, the, my clients fall into these three categories. Okay. okay. Women, us. including female veterans who want to transform their dreams into reality so that they can create a life that they love. I know, you know, and achieve new heights of authentic success. I know that there's a lot of, you know, especially even baby boomers, people like me getting ready to retire there. Maybe they've worked for the government. Maybe they work for a contractor. They've been giving back to the country. And when they retire, they still want to be able to give back, but Mm -hmm. maybe in a different way, but they've just been head down so far. They don't even know like, who am I? What do I want? That's how right. I felt when I retired. Right. So I want right. to help people like that. And entrepreneurs who want to position their company to accelerate results and win more government contracts while creating more freedom and time for themselves, for their relationships and their health. Part of it is this positive intelligence coaching. I do other coaching too. Um, and then empty nesters who are ready to retire, but know that they still have something left to contribute to the world. Those are the kinds of people that I want to help. So, and, you know, but if you have a government contracting related question, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll help you out the best I can. Um, if I have a con- government contracting question related to a specific contract, can you help me? No. Okay. Because, I mean, probably not, not right? right, right. I've been out of government for two years and, you know, I, I'm not going to, and, and uh, sometimes people want me to do their own, uh, their marketing for them or right. go and pitch their product to the Navy. Right. Those are things I don't do. There you yeah. go. And I like to be clear about that. That way we don't waste anyone's time. Right. Yeah. For, I mean, we, I promise you, we, we receive hundreds of emails a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I don't want, you know, I don't want to inundate you with a bunch of uh, not nonsense emails. So we just want to make sure everyone's prepared and everyone, again, we, that's part of my job is to help educate people. And as you see, I'm really good at knowing what the questions to ask so we can mm-hmm. eliminate um, as best as possible. We could screen through. Yeah. Some of the noise, yeah, uh, because right. again, it's it, you know, look, it, like you said, I don't mind taking the questions because we have a lot of resources we can send people to, but I'd rather be courteous and respectful of your time and mindful of that. Thank you, thank, thank you, you everybody for watching. Thank you, Emily, for coming on. Um, you know, you, you seem happy. Like, oh, you know, I'm happy. Like, I can walk. Seem- My hip doesn't hurt. I swim. I, you know. I'm oh, that's happy cool. being retired. Mm-hmm. No, that's great. That's great. Enjoy. Well, enjoy your retirement. <laughs> enjoy your podcast. Uh, I see you on Instagram all the time. So I, I'll keep sharing. We'll keep putting the message out there. All, all right. right. Hey, guys, listen, thank you so much for watching. As always, it's been a pleasure. Uh, let Emily know you enjoyed this podcast. Leave some comments on YouTube. Let us know what you thought. Give us a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Share it with everyone that you think could actually really gain some insight from this. Because again, as you see, we we did not just speak on government contracting. There's a lot of people out there, small businesses, solopreneurs. And while I think the government is doing a great job with stimulus and monies, 
we still, like you said, not, it doesn't address some of the other uh, sociological issues, psychological things that are affecting our small businesses. Emily, I even mentioned offline how lonely it is out here. Um, some of our guests on the show, Make It a Giant, says it's a very lonely journey. And that's why we try to create communities for people to be in together so we can share in um, those experiences and ideas together as a community here in GovCon Giant. So as always, thank you guys for being here. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. You guys. Hey, much love to you, Tracy. Much love to you guys, Muhammad. Thank you guys as always. We'll see you next week. Uh, back here, same time, same place. Bye, Emily. Take care. Bye. Bye.